according to Mark. At that time, one of the scribes came up to Jesus and asked him, Which commandment is the first of all? Jesus answered, The first is, Hear, O Lord, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbour as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. And the scribe said to him, you are right, teacher. You have truly said that he is one, and there is no other but he, and to love him with all the heart, all the understanding, and with all the strength, and to love one's neighbour as oneself, is much more than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And after that, no one <coughs> dared to ask him any question. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Jesus. Something curious is happening in this Gospel. <coughs> There's a conversation between Jesus and a scribe. Traditionally, these were the people who were in opposition to Jesus, but not today. It's the first point we need to make clear, I believe, in this Gospel. Never categorized people because generalizations can be extremely harmful. You must always seek good wherever good is. A scribe, an unusual one it would seem, speaks to Jesus and asks him an easy question that any Jew would have been able to answer. Which Commandment is the first of all. Jesus answered the Shema. The Shema is, Hear, o Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. This comes from Deuteronomy 6 4, the Torah, the scriptures that Jesus was brought up on, the scriptures that were taught to him. As a young boy. So this answer is not out of the blue. This is something that Jesus probably learned to say before we really knew what it meant. As our children will do the sign of the cross, they don't know what it means until later, but it was taught. And so the scribe is now still in command, saying, teacher, what is the most great, greatest commandment? He gives the answer, and then the teacher reiterates, yes, you've answered right, etc. So we know that this is important because he repeats it again. Anything repeated in the scripture means we must listen more carefully. But then something curiously, curious happened. Jesus saw that he answered wisely. Well, the scribe was answering his own question. So why did Jesus think he was answering wisely? There must have been something else other than the words that were being spoken. I presume Jesus felt that this was an unusual man, because he then goes on to say, you are not far from the kingdom of God. That's kind of unusual. Because in the Jewish religion in the time of Jesus, it was very much about 
obey all the rules and regulations and if you do all these things then God loves you and you will receive eternal life. God is saying, not opposing any of that, but saying greater than all the commandments is the love. And the love from the heart. Because it's heart, soul, mind and strength. Heart comes first. And then why? As we reach and after that, no one dared to ask him any question. That for me is curious. He was asked a question that everybody knew the answer to. The scribe, kind of unusual, but he would have known. And now Jesus says, You are not far from the kingdom of God, which one would expect a scribe wasn't, but there was something different going on here. To such an extent that no one wanted to ask him any other question. This is very strange in a sense. I think it is because Jesus, when he did anything, he did it from his heart before his mind. And I think I could be wrong that this is what changed the atmosphere of the listeners in this conversation. It was that Jesus wasn't talking from his head. He was talking from his heart. And I'd like to read you a few quotes from a book that was given to me called Prayer of the Heart. And it talks about personal prayer. And I ask myself, is this the kind of attitude people were picking up that after they had heard it in a very different way from the mouth of Jesus, this old way of understanding God had new life and they were now a little bit aware that something different had happened. <coughs> this man talks about personal prayer. Every being knows its own way of prayer and praise. And part of the inner journey is to discover and then live this prayer. For this prayer of the heart, there is no set time, nor any ritual, because it is the most intimate cry of the heart. This is the primal prayer of my soul, he says emerging into the emptiness that is within, at the very centre of my heart. Here there is a giving of myself to my beloved, with a totality that is a complete belonging to love. I feel that I am the very core of my longing. A desire that comes from the heart and embraces every breath, every cell of my body. And then when I feel my beloved, feel that love present within, I come to know the essence of prayer. That there is no separation that we are always together in love. This is the mystery of oneness. There came a time when this prayer, when this prayer becomes continuous, a prayer without ceasing. This awakening within the heart is a rebirth of an experience of continual prayer. This prayer is the essence of my being, a covenant of love, a remembrance, a meeting and a merging. This prayer is my practice, an offering of myself, my own most intimate way of being with my beloved. 
What else can I do in this world but pray? We are love's prayer. Isn't that beautiful? What else can we do in this world but pray? And I think that's what stunned the people into silence. Because this wasn't just hearing something that they knew. It was experiencing something that they did not know. And to end, I'd like to quote a great Catholic theologian, Fulton Sheen. If you ever want to be inspired, find one of his books, Fulton Sheen. How strong is our own love for God. Love gives. This is creation. Love suffers for others. This is redemption. Love longs for unity. This is Eucharist. Love is forever. That is hell. Isn't that beautiful? Shall I read it again? It's so... And I think it was the sense of this incredible way Jesus was able to love that when he used the old formula, it was something that stunned people into silence. How strong is our own love for God? Love gives, that is creation. Love suffers for others, that is redemption. Love longs for unity, that is Eucharist. Love is forever, that is heaven. Amen. Amen. Fulton Sheep.